So yeah, my name is Peter Skutter. I'm the product manager for Martin for the, uh, for the stage lights. What we're presenting here is the new uh, Mac Aura. Uh, I'm going to step through what it does and also what's really special about this and where we have put in the, the new thinking into a, a light. When we started to do this fixture, we wanted to take the advantages of an LED fixture, but we wanted to take out the disadvantages. We wanted to take out really the LED look out of the fixture. And what we wanted to achieve very, as you know, top on the list was we wanted to have a single source look. So we wanted to see like a circular lens uh, illuminated in the same color as the beam. So now I'm producing a white beam. We are using an RGB white system. So we have a really broad palette, color palette. Uh, but the beam that's coming out of the fixture is the same as you have in the lens, the full illuminated lens. That's what we wanted to achieve. And of course, we can do all sorts of shades of whites. We can go into saturated colors. Um, and we can swing it all here to the side. So the next thing was we also wanted to have a real good zoom. The zoom range we're showing here is going from a tight 11 degrees on a 10th peak angle. And we can zoom it out to 58 degrees. Go back again. It's a quite an impressive zoom range. It's really important for us also. We saw that with the 101. One of the successes was that we can really collimate the light for all those beam effects. So if you have lots of beams on the stage, they don't always uh, all melt together. Back to the beams. Taking the beam out. And I'm putting some lights back on again. I think so. Another time. That's too far in the, the list. I'm not a good operator, apparently. So what we're showing here, and that's where really the new thing, that's something that came up during the project. We also had some requests sometimes, you know, where the designer, he wants to see a light on stage, but he doesn't actually want beam on stages. Maybe there's some black holes on the, on, on the set that needs to be illuminated. So what we're doing here is that we have an additional set of LEDs to illuminate the lens from behind. That's what we call the aura LEDs. So this one, you can use it as a scenic look with a really good view angle, but without putting any beams onto the stage. Now when it comes interesting is then when we start to mix the two colors. I still have a blue beam coming out of the fixture, but my aura lights are in a different color. Now they're in a red. So the look I get into the lens is different. So we create this new type of eye candy look. I can work with the zoom. Then I can get from a really subtle effect into like a more radical effect. The way we can control uh, the colors is we have a full individual control of it, but we can also, we have an effects engine, so we can link the aura backlights with the beam lights. We can set an offset, which is zero, means that it will be the same color. We can make a subtle offset, so when the beam is red, uh, maybe the light is, or, or the aura is orange, or it could be blue or whatever. We can decide how much we want to have. So there you saw a really subtle change, and here is more radical. The effects engine we're working with can link to the, to the, to the colors, to the saturation, uh, to strobing, for example. We have zoom effects as well. So now we do some macros also where we are, we are running the zoom together with the other colors. So again, you have a background color which is not doing the beam, and then you have the beam coming out in a different color. Again, like a strobe effect, so we have a certain color in the background and then we strobe out with a different color. 
So you don't get the white beam out in the face, you're not blinded by the white beam, but you get the yellow beam flashing. And also, the, uh, we have filed patents for the, uh, for the aura color mixing, actually for, for the color mixing system in the fissure in general, but also for the way we're actually building in this effects engine, which will allow the programmer to do some of these effects a lot easier than he had to do it, everything from scratch on, on the console. So this is where we, uh, what I have on, on this one here. Now we just want to look a little bit more on the screen and Simon can explain, you know, how we work with the, uh, with the ROS here together with the video screen and the pixel mapping. Um, what we've done with the, uh, excuse me, what we've done with the, uh, the show here, we've got about an hour and 15 minutes worth of time code where we're just running through some sort of ambient tunes. Um, We've only got about 150 cues in it, so we're just triggering it, say, every 45 seconds, that sort of thing. Um, what we've done is we've tried to, obviously, we're trying to show various products here, the screens, but also the aura as well. Um, like Peter mentioned, we've got this RGB as a backlight and an RGB white as a front light as well. So what we can essentially do, we can pixel map both at the same time. We can pixel map them individually. So, for example, we can choose whether or not we just want the aura lit up or whether we want the main beam lit. We can also choose to separate them on layers. So essentially you could have the same piece of content, uh, maybe two different colors, but a slightly different speed. So you would see the glow or the aura light trail behind the main light. So you can create some really nice looks that you would have a lot of trouble creating on a console without sort of a media server and being able to pixel map the front light and the back light. Um, here we are. Uh, I'll just bump through, just hit number 10 for yeah. us, yeah. Um, and again. That's it. So here we're just using uh, pixel mapping, and all we're doing is pixel mapping the glow, or the aura. So we're not really getting that light thrown off, we're just illuminating a panel, so it's not too in your face, as it were. Um, and again, Peter. The aura by itself is, uh, you can't, you don't see the individual LEDs, they all come on as, one channel as it were, i.e. one red, one green, one blue. Um, but in terms of LEDs, it's the Aura, is it? The Aura, is, it's, it's a RGB chip, but it's it's coming up as one pixel in the lens. How yeah. many LEDs are in there? 30 LEDs. Yeah. Um, so again, we saw we can now play with the zoom on top of that. And as we pull the zoom back, as you saw earlier with some of the stuff that Peter went through, the, you get a very different look with that main uh, beam LED, depending on where the zoom lens is as well. So you can create very, very different looks, even just by shifting the zoom. Um, and again. And again, here we're pixel mapping with, uh, with Aura as well. Um, also, some slight bit of beam. We can add the beam in as well. So we can just say, for example, we want to pixel map the Aura, but we're going to put the beam at, for example, in this case, maybe 10 or 20% blue. So that's always on, and we can just run this pixel map content in the background. But what it enabled us to do with this fixture, with a show with say 150 cues in it, normally with a wash light you can run out of ideas pretty quickly. Um, a wash light is a wash light generally, but I have to say that with this uh, we managed to never run out of ideas. You know, even after 150 cues we still had other ones and it, in fact it became the thing where you'd have lots of different choices and the, the, the hard part became deciding which one you wanted to use. And that with the built-in effects that, that Peter's shown you, you can really start to add this different dimension to the products. Um, so yeah, I'll, uh, I'll happily let it run through and uh, do it. And here's a good example of, you know, really bold between the white and the blue. And you'll see that tracking across the white coming across now into that aura. Again, it's not in your face, it's not blinding you, you can still see the screens, but you've just got that different sort of pixel size and yeah, just creates uh, something different, which is what we all want. So, any questions for us? Retail price? The retail price is uh, 3907 as far as I recall, I can get you the second half of us, but 3907. Euro. 3907 euros, yeah. okay. And how much does it weigh? The weight is just some, some hard facts. Ah, thank you. <laughs> it's 5.6 kilo. It's, it's <laughs> overall also the, the optical system is very efficient. Yeah. Um, so we get a lot of the light through from the LEDs. Power consumption is 230 watt. 
On here on 240, we take only one amp. It's 5.6 kilos. Um, very small footprint. What was the price again? 39.07. I would never pay more than 06. <laughs> to be honest. Uh, does it have anything? That's other Danish Krona, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. How many you off though? Is there? Is it just a DMX port, or do, are there any other ways to feed signal to it? No, it's just DMX. Okay. Yeah. The way we've done the DMX layout is essentially the uh, the beam part of the fixture is the first 19 channels, and the aura is the, the last six uh, or so channels. So what we've done on this console is we, we patch them sequentially so that then on the media server we can separate them as fixtures. So my one layer of beam light is there, and my other layer of aura light is there, and I can do different stuff on it. Are the uh, LED engines replaceable, or is um, it the entire panel? The way it's, it's constructed is that we have, of course, the two set of LEDs, and they're all separate. Uh, so we've got the one with the low power LEDs for the aura, which is one board, and we got the other one, which, which uh, the beam light, which is, is a different board. Uh, but if one goes out, you replace all you, of them. You, you normally change the complete port with the uh, LEDs. Yeah.